more than 80% of the cases we undo end up resolved through alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, which reflects the milestones we've achieved as a government entity in realization of access to justice for the indigent, marginalized, and vulnerable persons within our society. We not only integrate EKS into our services, but also extend it to training our community elders, paralegals, and mediators. Expanding legal aid to include AJS systems often resolves conflicts more quickly, cheaply, effectively, and amicably than the formal court processes. It is also more accessible. Ladies and gentlemen, at the National Legal Aid Service, we are seeking to enhance access to justice in line with the government's agenda on good governance, strengthening the rule of law, promotion, and respect for human rights. Achieving this requires that we open our minds and hearts to a more inclusive, innovative, and humane solution through alternative justice systems. The categorization of our clients, the people we serve under the National Legal Aid Service, we are classified as the indigent, marginalized, and vulnerable persons, will give you an idea of all the members of the society that we serve. In the ordinary sense, these are people who will be disadvantaged in accessing the formal justice systems and would require other means to help them resolve their disputes. Imagine a border border raider in a border disagreeing over child maintenance. These are narrowly disadvantaged persons who would not afford legal processes to preserve the interests of the child. Yet, these are some of the real cases that you deal with daily at the National Legal Aid Service through the application of alternative justice systems. I will tell you a small story. Uh, not long ago, a lady sought our services of a child who had lost his speech and could not speak due to what was told or what she believed was a curse from the child's grandfather. According to the lady, the father-in-law did not approve their marriage, and according to their culture, this amounted to a curse, which affected the child's speech. Now, you can imagine, uh, judges, how you do with such a case. We advised the lady to go and bring someone else from the village with a session, we had a session with, and we agreed that they would approach the child's grandfather to explore their traditional methods of unlocking the cars and mediating the conflict. Now, of course, when this came, and we followed up a few days later, and the report he got from one of the relatives was that the grandfather had softened his stand after mediation with his peers, reconciled with the granddaughter, I mean, with the daughter-in-law, and the cars was unlocked. This is a true story. I had to ask people in my office over and over again. I told them I'm coming to tell the CJ this story. So it must be verified, and it is this true. Of course, I'm sure it raises a lot of issues. What happened? For us, we know we referred the dispute to AJS, and the ends of justice were achieved. This conference is very important for us at the National Legal Aid Service because it reinforces our vision to protect and promote the right to access to justice, especially for our key target groups would otherwise encounter several challenges, including uh, court filing fees, understanding the legal procedures, and even accessing the courts. Additionally, this conference is crucial for us as it provides a platform to share our experiences and learn from the best practices from other partners. The conversations and insights came from this conference are invaluable for enhancing our AJS framework and expanding our scope of facilitating access to justice for the hundreds of underprivileged members of our society who seek our services every day. We are grateful for the support of the EU. We have mounted an information booth with IAC materials that you can take along to your state counties as you go back home. We know that when we speak about justice, engaging our communities is paramount. Justice should not be an abstract concept confined to courtrooms or towns or county headquarters. It is a living thing breathing part of everyday life and present in the different locations of the country, we must empower local communities to participate actively in these justice processes. This involves training community leaders, elders, youth, women and girls in AJS, thereby integrating all other forms of dispute resolution practices in the formal legal frameworks. As such, justice will be readily acceptable by the people it serves. 
It is for this reason that in our strategic plan for the years 2023 to 2028, we envision increased access to justice and quality of legal services available to the public, as well as reducing barriers to legal service provision and access to justice. We are fully aware that this will remain only a mirage if we do not embrace agents. We believe that justice should be accessible, efficient, and culturally reasonable, and justice, alternative justice systems embody these values. Considering that the core mandate of ELEX is to support the most vulnerable, our interventions are meant to contribute to social justice and a people-centered approach in setting up enhanced justice delivery. ELAS has to bring life to the government's responsibility to serve the citizens and provide justice services as part of the overall public services, which have to be designed to meet the expectations and needs. Our vision is to see a justice system where every citizen can resolve disputes efficiently and fairly through application of ADS. Lastly, Retooling our AJS framework is essential to meeting the evolving needs of our society. This involves integrating modern technology to streamline processes and increase efficiency. Digital platforms can facilitate virtual sessions, making it easier for disputing parties to resolve disputes without the need for physical presence. Additionally, we should continuously review and update our policies to reflect best practices and lessons learned from other jurisdictions. This mission requires a collaborative effort. We need to support and co uh, co cooperation of government agencies, civil society organizations, international partners, and the private sector. By working together, we can create a robust AJS framework and ensure that all Kenyans can access justice. In conclusion, accelerating people's cyber justice in Kenya through engaging, expanding, and retooling AJS is not just an idea, it is a necessity. Let us commit to this vision and work tirelessly to make it a reality. Together we can build a justice system that is truly for the people, by the people. This endeavor will also require financial investments consistent with the needs. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for this wonderful conference as we seek to accelerate this journey of enhancing AJS within the tradition and logic of social transformation through access to justice, of expanding organic, people-centered approaches to access to justice, and celebrate our Chief Justice for pioneering this role in this area. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, uh, for uh, those remarks on the National Legal Aid Service Board. How many have heard of the board? Wengi. Lakini siyo wengi sana. Ah, yeah. Uh, now, it is my pleasure to invite uh, Senior Counsel, one of the country's leading advocates uh, and Chair of the Kenya Legal and Chair Kenya Legal and Network Issues Board, Senior Counsel Ambrose Rachiel. <laughs> if you thought that lawyers only wear Italian suits, you are about to be proven wrong. <laughs> but knowing where he comes from, <laughs> this attire is more expensive than an Italian suit. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Your Ladyship, Chief Justice Martha Home. And although I'm going to adopt, uh, adopt the protocol, I must mention Honorable Dr. Smoking Kwanja and uh, Lady Justice Njoki Dugu, and of course Honorable Justice Professor Joel Gugi, um, distinguished guests, members of the judiciary, delegates, practitioners, Guests, ladies and gentlemen, Amujambo. Uh, this week, as we reflect on the milestones achieved in implementing the alternative justice systems, AJS, celebrating their impact on our communities and sharing the best practice 
I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to all the practitioners and pioneers of the alternative justice narrative in Kenya. The theme of this year's conference, namely accelerating people-centered justice in Kenya, engaging, expanding, and retooling alternative justice resonates deeply with the Kelin's mission, which is to promote and protect health-related human rights for all. Kelin stands for Kenya Ethical and Legal Issues Network, an organization founded in 1992 under the auspices of, UNESCO, of UNDP and UNESCO, but eventually taken over by various other donors in the late 1990s. It was born out of the need to address the ethical and legal issues that arose from uh, due to the pandemic, the AIDS pandemic, that we know was in our country from 1984. So that was the original, but we have expanded our mandate. That is Kenya Ethical and AIDS Ethical Issues Network. One of the first consumers, of course, have been uh, disadvantaged uh, widows of those uh, we are widowed by HIV and AIDS. So that's the background of our network. We have since expanded to address wider issues relating to land and health. So um, social transformation through access to justice offers a unique opportunity for societies to engage with AJS and devise community-based solutions to justice issues. And this must be done with a commitment to moral rectitude, grounded in fairness, equity, rationality, ethics, the rule of law, religious doctrines, and human rights. At Kellen, we recognize that different societies have unique justice needs, cultures, and traditions. Some progressive and protective of human rights, others regrettably harmful due to the persistence of patriarchy. Since the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution, Kelin has been expanding AJS through our cultural structural project. This project enhances the capacity of AJS practitioners who are well versed in their community's culture and traditions, promoting people-centered justice through right-based approaches. Working innovatively with these practitioners, Kellen has facilitated the resolution of 1,064 cases involving poor women, widows who are living with HIV, youth, and the elderly, helping them reclaim their rights and dignity. These efforts are documented in our compendium of cases with editions published in 2017 and 2022 available on Kellen website. We also retool AJS through multi-stakeholder partnerships, offering training and hosting knowledge sharing sessions with both governmental and non-governmental actors. This advances a culture of justice that ensures fair outcomes and animates AJS practices. Our research and surveys, such as studies on the impact of dowry among the Luo, the Luo culture, and the global social norms on women's land and property rights, contribute to policy making and advocacy, promoting equal opportunities and a society where everyone can live free from fear and want. As Kaleen walks, the paths of reclaiming lives and rebuilding rights, we remain steadfast in our commitment to promoting people-centered justice by engaging 
expanding and redoing AJS for the well-being of Kenyans and beyond. We look forward uh, to connecting with some part more partners and continuing these invaluable partnerships. I also invite you to visit the Kelly booth to learn more about our work and explore our products. Erokamano, Kongoi. Thank you very much. my microphone. I am not being uh, Let's give a round of applause to Senior Council Ambrose Rachier, doing excellent and novel work. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Council. Now, I want to introduce a special person, special in the sense that where he comes from rarely makes appearances in forums like this. Uh, the, our next speaker uh, is a banker. When was the last time you saw a banker in an AJS meeting? <laughs> and uh, our next speaker, I have a friend who works with you, your chief economist, tells me you are an extraordinary banker who is an engineer and who went to MIT. Uh, by the way, when the the, the Vice Chancellor talked about Yale. I saw Ivy League fellows here twitching. Joel said, why not Harvard, where he went? Our next speaker said, why not MIT, where he went? Justice Wanjala said, why not Columbia, where he went? And Professor Celeste Nyamu as well also said, why not Harvard, where she went? So you need to upgrade so that next time the Kabarak students excel in those universities. But anyway, <laughs> So our next speaker is an engineer by training uh, and a banker. And as I said, I've gotten to know uh, about him and his humanity from one of his uh, colleagues who happens to be a friend of mine. So when I saw him in the program, I said, this proves the point that John Gashora, the chair of Kenya Bankers Association, has a humanity beyond pursuing profits. Let's put our hands together for Mr. John Gashora, who is also the Group Managing Director of NCBA Bank. Welcome, Engineer Banker. Go for it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction. Allow me to recognize, even as I adopt the protocols, uh, Honorable Justice Mother Kome, Chief Justice, President of the Supreme, of Supreme Court of Kenya. Let me also appreciate Your Excellencies, the Governor Mandela and the Deputy Governor Nakuru, the Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, Dr. Smoking Wanjala, and my friend, Deputy Justice Jokindungu, and of course, my schoolmate, the Honorable Justice Professor Joel Gogi, uh, who invited me to today's uh, occasion. Um, Honorable Justice, Mother Kwame, let me report to you that this morning before you arrived, all your judges were on stage dancing. Um, and I hope, I hope everybody wasn't thinking what I was thinking, that how can we take them seriously after this? Uh, but indeed, it's an honor to address you today and as we convene to discuss and implement transform transformative strategies under the theme Accelerating People-Centered Justice in Kenya, Engaging, Expanding, and Retouring alternative, alternative Justice Systems. This initiative is a testament to our collective commitment to ensuring justice is accessible, efficient, untailored to the needs of our people. Traditional judicial systems, while indispensable, often face challenges such as case backlogs, which has been mentioned, and I need to find out that Swahili word that was mentioned earlier, high costs, and procedural complexities 
that has become true, unfortunate of our court system, that can hinder us with justice. This is where alternative justice systems come into play by offering mediation, arbitration, and other community-based conflict resolution mechanisms. AJS can significantly alleviate the burden on our courts and provide more culturally relevant and accessible avenues for justice. People-centered justice systems, of course, are not new in Kenya. And I suppose that's why Justice Gogi decided that we should dress in our traditional dress to remind us that in our own tradition this has been true. But even more recently, I reflected a bit on a story I had from my brother. Now, my brother was a chief, recently retired. And when he talked to me about his work, he told me most of it involved dispute resolution, disputes ranging from succession, marital disputes, border disputes, and other non-family issues. And the decisions the chief and his group would make went way beyond resolution. He told me a story recently of a case that he had to deal with. A mother and her daughter conspired to hide a pregnancy from the husband and from the church, something unfortunate that does happen even today. When the mother found out the daughter was pregnant, she took her to her auntie's house, which was quite far from where they lived. And she stayed there until she gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. And once the boy was born, the mother again took the boy to a children's home in the Muru. And she wrote an affidavit claiming that this child, this boy, was hers, and indeed, that she was a poor mother who could not afford to raise this child. And besides that, that she had lost her husband, who was purportedly the father, due to alcohol abuse. And she did have a it. And she went further to say that, given her circumstances, she was willing to give up the child for adoption. A year went by. At the end of one year, a couple showed up and showed interest in adopting this child. But they asked that they must get a birth certificate. So the mother was called and asked to get a birth certificate for this child. And of course, where do most rural people run to when they ask for a birth certificate? The first place to go is the chief. So she went to the chief in the Muru and said, I need to get a birth certificate. After a bit of interrogation, the chief found out that this mother came from my area, and so he called my brother, who was a chief, and said, we need help. There's a mother here who needs a birth certificate and says uh, there's a child who has been in a children's home. And when my brother found out who this was, it's somebody he knew very well. Not only did he know her very well, but he knew of her husband who happened to have been a professional, a professional from the area, and not only a professional, he was a church elder, and he never touched alcohol in his life. <laughs> when he talked to the lady, the lady said, please, my husband has no idea that I've written this affidavit, does not even know about this child. So, my brother got together with the other chief, called the children's home, talked to them and the mother. The mother confessed, of course, what she had done. And it became a matter of my brother and the other chief convincing the children's home to please to keep this child. And more importantly, they decided never to let the husband know because they knew that if the husband knew, the home was finished. And in so doing, they chose to save a home. So I reflected on this, and perhaps it's not the decision, and please let's not question the decision we made, but it was the fact that part of the decision was to keep this secret. We didn't have court reporters writing this story anywhere. It was decided and settled. And the child was indeed adopted. That's a good story, the end to the story. 
was adopted to a very good home. But they chose to keep this secret. And so, alternative dispute resolution, the benefits are not just about the time. It's also about other things that are culturally relevant, that is secrecy to keep homes together. So AJS has many advantages for businesses that value confidentiality and privacy. It keeps issues, as I said, out of the prying eyes of co-reporters and public disclosure requirements. And AJS is not just a Kenyan problem. As you all know, American elections are around the corner. And two old men are competing to lead the richest nation on earth. I like that laughter because someone actually told me the other day that uh, if there's anything the American elections are teaching us is that that old adage that old is wise is highly exaggerated. <laughs> anyway, back to AJS. As we know, one of the candidates is about, uh, his career is about to end, isn't it? It could end due to a court case. I think we're all waiting uh, to see what happens. But as I was thinking about it, I couldn't help but wonder if perhaps, if perhaps, given the story I just told about the chief, if he had used alternative justice system, if perhaps could his career have been saved if none of us knew the going on behind the scenes and he had it resolved. But on the other hand, it's perhaps nature's way of reminding us that anyone can save the world because, as, as many have said, who could have ever imagined that an, ad an adult film star might indeed save America? So it was probably important to have it disclosed. And anyway, just the musings of a banker. So back to AJS. I recognize that for, co for common law country like ours, AJS may deny the judicial system access to important case laws. But that's a small price to pay for justice to be served. At Kenya Bankers Association, we have witnessed firsthand the pivotal role that a robust justice system plays in fostering economic stability and societal well-being. A people-centered approach to justice not only upholds the rule of law, but also ensures that every citizen, regardless of their socioeconomic status, can access fair, and timely resolutions to their disputes. With that said, I am pleased that banks, our customers, partners, and the wider Kenyan public continue to embrace alternative dispute resolution methods. The impact and progressive success of this has, is demonstrated by the over 400 bank cases that have been fully settled through mediation with a value of over seven billion shillings being released to the economy. The average time taken to settle the cases so far 54 days, underscoring the significance of alternative justice systems in offering banks and their customers a faster, more cost-effective, and mutually beneficial alternatives to traditional courtroom litigation. And nobody needs to lose a pound of flesh. I like to encourage our customers to really consider using mediation and other um, non-court alternatives to resolving disputes. As I always remind our customers, unfortunately, courts have the standing power to continue with a court case for years and years to come. Unfortunately, customers don't have the time or the money to do so. And so we encourage them to use alternative dispute resolution. The theme of today's event, engaging, expanding, and retooling alternative justice systems, highlights three critical areas of focus. One, engaging stakeholders. Effective implementation of AJS requires the active participation of all stakeholders, including government, including the executive arm of government, judiciary, legal practitioners, community leaders, and the public. Collaborative efforts will ensure that the systems we put in place are indeed inclusive and reflective on the needs and values of our society. Number two, expanding reach. To truly accelerate people-centered justice, 
AJS must be accessible to all, especially in rural and underserved communities. This involves not only increasing the number of AJS centers, but also enhancing public awareness and education about these alternative mechanisms. To this end, we should seriously consider the role the chief plays in dispute resolution and how, I, how we can bring them on board as trusted local practitioners. Retouring systems, on the third one, continuous improvement and innovation are essential for the success of AJS. And this includes training mediators and arbitrators, integrating technology to streamline processes, and adopting best practices from successful models worldwide. By retooling our systems, we can ensure that they remain effective and responsive to the evolving needs of our society. In closing, I'd like to reiterate the importance of our collective efforts in advancing a people-centered justice system.